Right? And every time we watch humans play, it is humans versus stack of removal. Look at these other choices. Look at the, how much mid-range. So Steven's blue-black mid-range. These are some wild deck choices. Zach Allen's on Stone Blade. Not two color, stone, just straight blue white Stone Blade. Raza Suleiman's on Sultai mid range. Yeah, this deck, it's starting to crop up a little bit. It's a proactive Jace the Mind Sculpt. Okay, show. I was going to ask generally, like three color black green decks are just why would you not play Blood Bright Elf? And the answer is three Jace? Yes. Okay. So we're curving out with some early discard spells, your Thought Seasons, your Inquisition, three of each of those, four Fatal Push. There's also three Spreading Seas in this list, which is a That's little wild. intriguing. That, that one I'm a little less sure of, but then we're curving into Liliana the Veil. Obviously, we have Tarmogoyf, and then Jace the Mind Sculptor, three copies of the four slot. Okay, so Collins, no Aether Vial, turn one, just a basic planes, and Raja, he'll get to figure out what's up with a fetch for Thought Seas. And let's see what we're looking at. Bunch of creatures, if you can well, believe like that. Well, that's like all the deck is. Of course, it's... <laughs> Second land, Meddling Mage, Kite Sail Freebooter, Thalia, and two Lieutenants. Two of her lieutenants backing her up as they would. Thalia, probably the most intimidating card. Depending what the contents of the hand are, you might have to go for the Freebooter. The combination of Freebooter Meddling Mage can break up a lot of hands. Yeah, so if you can't beat that one two punch, you might have to do something about it. Mm -hmm. If you have two more removal spells, you can just take something else, Collins will Freeboot you, and then you just kill the Freebooter. The mana is not great for Colin's hand. You see a second land and then just five spells that cost two. Yeah, he can cast them all. Right. The but hope is that the first two drop really impedes, impedes Raja's ability to play the game at all. Yeah, the hard part, Ryan, is that, so do you want to draw more two drops because you're going to kill spell deck, or do you want to draw lands three and four? It's like, land three without four is terrible. Yes. Kind of yeah. want to draw, like, Noble Hierarch into land. This is unexpected. Raja took Meddling Mage. Yeah, I'm a little surprised by that. I, I estimate that to be worse than Thalia and Freebooter. That was the two, yeah. And if his hand is just, like, three okay, Fatal right, Push, right, that makes some sense. We see Thalia being cast. Now, Raja does have a, have a Fatal Push. So as long as he has an untapped land, this is fine. He'll keep pace. No worries. He does not have much diversity in removal spells, just in the deck in general. It's four push, two Abrupt Decay, a Dismember, and then a Maelstrom Pulse and a Murderous Cut. But these are all very light numbers. Yeah. One of for all of those that aren't the two Decay or the four, four push. So Botanical Sanctum untapped and a pass. There's an interesting timing issue here with Raja. So he could take two damage. Then post-combat freebooter, fatal push in response. That's cost him two damage. He could prevent the damage by fatal pushing here, which is what he's going to do, but that means if Collins drew another Thalia, Raja's punished. Sure, Thalia is an issue, though. Getting that push out is nice, because we have a third land and a Snapcaster Mage in the hand. Yeah, we see on the side of Raja, we have Snapcaster Mage, Spreading Seas, two more lands. Yeah, the cards that the freebooter can take here, they're just no good. It's just a Thought Seas and a Spreading Seas. Neither of those matter at all. Yeah, the, I mean, the Thought Seas actually is still live right now. I, it's probably better than, it's better than Spreading Seas, just, right? Just like both of them are very bad. Colin's hand is yeah. a, a bunch of two-mana creatures. You just have to play on the battlefield. Well, how about that for a draw? Liliana of the Veil, and uh, I don't know if he can cast it on curve. He's got Creeping Tar Pit. Gross. Well, I mean, you're playing Sultai. It's... Yeah, Breeding Pool, Creeping Tar Pit. Yeah, the, the mana base is actually a little weird here. Going for Botanical Sanctum, there's a Blooming Marsh. He's three Tar Pits, that's so many. I guess that's I don't mind the happens. Tar Pit, the, the Fast Lands Tar Pit's a little weird. So here's Breeding Pool, he shocks for it, but you can't. And then it says go. At instant speed, you have Snapcaster Fatal Push. Okay, here we go. And suppose you're not going to push the freebooter. So, so the idea is you Snapcaster Fatal Push something, untap. Well, actually, you can't Liliana the other thing because you still don't have the untapped black. That's an issue. Three mana. What did Collins pick up? How about Mantis Rider? Very nice pickup. Swing. Snapcast Fatal Push is going to be cast anyway. Gets back the Thought Seas. We'll go down to 12 on the swing. Raja really wants to draw untapped black here. Yes. Wants to find that second swamp. Can he do it? Big draw. Jace the Mind Sculptor. It not Ugh. even castable. Ugh. Not for, so now next, now he's a problem where next turn he can cast both his walkers, but cast neither of them this turn. That's a miss. 
Yeah, wants the Spreading Seas to produce another removal Ugh. spell, though there's not a ton of them in the deck. Spreading Seas is just not good here. Yeah, he's not playing counter spells. This is a heavy discard build, so turning off yeah. Cavernous Souls doesn't really matter. Yeah, picks up a card off Spreading Seas. So he's locked in for three more damage. He's behind the curve on creatures. What you want is they play a creature, you kill it. But when you're behind, that dynamic still happens, but you take damage each time. <laughs> Thought sees the hand has three Thalia's lieutenants. So okay. We'll take, take one of those. Yeah. <laughs> Tar Pit tapped. Pass. Hand is Liliana, Jace, Misty Rainforest. Is that? Yeah, the Misty Rainforest was drawn off the spreading seas. That's why we didn't see a better turn. Yeah. Would have been much better to get online with Ooh. Liliana. Two more lieutenants. That was the fourth land from Collins. They'll play out the rest of the hand. Swing for five. Raja down to five. Yeah, fully half of the life total. And now Raja, I guess, you know, he can chase and bounce the rider, but the rider just has haste. Yep. That is the play he has, is Jace Bounce Mantis Rider. Picked up Serum Visions. He Ooh. can look for something. You have to fetch to look for Serum Visions, and you are at five. So if you fetch to four, the problem is, is that one one Thala's lieutenant is going to be lethal. I mean, you can just never use that mana. Well, no, 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 just like it's immediately lethal, right? So you go, so you, you bounce Mantis Rider, you go to four. Yeah, well, what I'm saying is just oh. like, just pretend you don't have oh, that land in your hand. Yeah, the land's just not there. Yeah, just, yeah, just yes. cast the visions, you're never shuffling because it leaves you dead. It's not, you're not doing much yeah. with this amount of mana. So I'd hang on to the fetch because I can just, I don't know. You're probably just losing. I think he's already lost the game. Well, there, there's a possible, Ryan, that, that if this, this Serum Visions just hits a home run, you know, let's say Serum Visions finds him a fatal push because he just triggered Revolt. And if he searches for a, another black source and he comes up with Serum Visions into fatal push, kill your Mantis Rider, play Liliana, sack a creature, chump block the, man, chump block the Thalys Lieutenant, Collins draws a land. Like, we did it. it. It's ugly, but we did it. You can't Liliana and Fatal Push. No, 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 you have to fetch Shock for Black. Sure, You'd have to yeah. go to two. Yeah, that, uh, that's disgusting. You, you'd fetch Shock for Black and then just like jam the Serum Visions and be like, I need the perfects. Yeah, he didn't find it. No, he brainstorms with Jace into some things that he's going to die with in his hand. Yep. Yeah, the out I was talking on is some, like, some really low percenter because I also... It wasn't just him drawing the, the perfect card on top. Also, Collins had to hit a land, and even then we were at two. Yeah, the game was just like not even over if that happens. Right, that's how we get to keep playing. Yeah. But it was there. Raja's going to pick up the cards. Collins Mullen on humans takes game one over Siltai midrange. Sure, it's against a kill spells deck, but he keeps them off balance for just long enough. Yep. And post-sideboard, things should get a good amount better for Raja. All right. Well, we will look at that when we come back with game two after this message.
All right, so game one went the way of Collins Mall. Now, Raja Suleiman's still time mid range. In a lot of ways, Ryan, it's going to be like a Jund deck, but instead of playing Terminates and Blood Braids and Bolts, you decide that you would like Jace's Spreading Seas and Counter Spells. Depending on the matchup, I can get that. I, I think in this matchup, you probably prefer the red cards. Yes. But what, so, do you imagine you have a similar idea about sideboarding, but your options are different? Right. And kind of the issue with two of your colors being blue and green, you don't get access to more one mana removal spells. No. So you go over the sideboard, there's two Ceremonious Rejection, two Counter Squalls, two Engineered Explosives, two Nile Spellbomb, two Obstinate Baloth, an Abrupt Decay, a Collective Brutality, a Disdainful Stroke, a Liliana the Last Hope, and a Tireless Tracker. So the Abrupt Decay, the Engineered Explosives, these are the best cards, and Explosives a fair amount better than Abrupt Decay on top of that. Yeah. I'm going to go and say, I don't know that any of the blue cards in his 75 are good in this matchup. Um, I don't have any that I like. Serum Visions. No, he's playing Thalia. I'm, I'm, no, I don't like it. Sure, you, you, mean you want it on turn one, but yeah, it's not good against Thalia. Yeah, all two copies of it. Yes. Right. L Liliana, the last hope's fine in the matchup. But yeah, the, the sideboard, the upgrades are pretty minor. Collective Brutality is another card you have to bring in. Yeah, it can kill something. Obstinate Baloth, I think he might reach for them, but they're not that good. Right, I mean, the, the problem is is that you need to board out, some, like, on four mana, would you rather have Jace the Mind Sculptor or Obstinate Baloth here? Obstinate Baloth. Okay, if that's true, like, we're already boarding out the Spreading Seas. And the Thought Seas. And the Thought Seas. And the Inquisition. So that's eight uh, cards. Or maybe some. Okay. Inquisition I'm fine All with. Right, that's, that's five. Five cards already before I even touched the Jaces. Yeah. So and, th and that's all your removal spells. So if you're like Jace for Bailoff might just happen. Here come the four mana four fours. You know, that's not that bad. It, it's like pretty bad. You know what? Against death and taxes, I like Obstinate Bailoff because they actually just can't beat it up. Uh, yeah. I feel the, the Their creatures don't get better over time. <laughs> They're bad and are always bad. Yeah. So then when you which makes it even worse when you lose to them. Yeah. It's like you, your creatures weren't good when you played them, and then they kept not being good, and then I lost. I don't know. And I'm so frustrated by your stack of basic planes. I don't know. Anybody beats a Flicker Wisp. <laughs> That's a powerful deck. Game two underway. More good news. Teammate Austin yeah, Collins with Soul Tie Constrictor wins game one over Steven Dykeman. That's impressive. Yeah. You, you know, Soul Tie, I think, actually has... I'm okay with that matchup. Players, it can go either way. Like, around. if they curve out with the right things, you lose. But but the cool part about Soltai Constrictor is if they miss a spot on the curve, you punish them pretty well for it. Yeah, you're asking the questions. Yeah. And the games that you lose, some of them are just not fun at all. Yeah, if they just, like, remove everything as you play it, and then they just cast a, you know, cast a Scarab God, and then you don't kill it, you, you, you lose. Mm -hmm. It's kind of boring. So this is another thing that it just kind of snowballs the fact that we're on blue, green, black versus yeah. playing one of the either red or white okay. is that Raja's engineered explosives also get worse. Why is that? Because you just have to use it more proactively. As soon as you're able to hit something, you kind of have to hit it with that, whereas when you have access to more cheaper removal spells, you don't have to expose it just yet. Now, luckily, he also produced Collected Brutality here, so he has to go for that and still disguise the explosives. You want to find a spot where you can explosive for two things. Yeah, I think what you're saying is, I remember you used to say Wrath of God gets better when you have spot removal. Right. Because then you can you get to force them to play into it, and if you, all you have is sweepers, then your sweepers turn into one-for-ones. Yeah. If you just uh, are casting one creature into my Lightning Bolt Snapcaster Mage deck, I'm going to catch it. So you try to play two creatures. And then you verdict. And then I tag you with the explosives, the wrath. Yeah. And he did get two creatures here. He got two. So it was, a, it was Champion of the Parish, Noble Hierarch from Collins. Raja's turn three is explosives on one, crack. It's a two for one. It's good for Raja. Now, one of those two was Noble Hierarch, which is only kind of a card in this matchup. Mm -hmm. Like a turn two Noble Hierarch, I'm not... Isn't isn't completely a thing. Collins' response is good, though. Third mana and Mantis Rider. He's done a great job of asking questions here. So far, though, Raja's had the answers. Yeah, if Hierarch was just the only third mana source, that explosives would have been a much bigger swing yeah. because Collins can just start casting Mantis Riders. Collins' spot's still pretty strong. And we're seeing a punishment here of the fact that Raja's... Rem like, because he doesn't have red cards, he has to play more cards like Collective Brutality. Look at this turn. He's got a fourth on tapped land and a Snapcaster Mage, but mm -hmm. because his removal's not Bolt, he just, like, isn't able to remove the card he needs to remove. Yeah, the Brutality doesn't play. The Explosives can't be flashed back. So instead, it's Tireless Tracker land making a clue. 
it's a fine card. It applies good pressure in the other direction. Yeah. The it, redraws are pretty inefficient. I don't mind the idea of getting a threat down here. Uh, it, it's fine. The problem is that Raja didn't make this play because it's the play he wanted. He made this play because his other options were bad. Yep. So Mantis Rider will knock down to 13. Colin's got to be wary. This tire tracker will keep drawing cards. Mm -hmm. You also have to be a little mindful of things like Maelstrom Pulse if you're thinking about committing more Mantis Riders. You are playing against a green-black deck. There's one sure. Pulse in the 75. I actually think because there's no red cards, I would be more suspicious of Pulse because you think the Smirgeage deck's got to get their kill spells from somewhere. Right. It wouldn't be surprising if a deck like this played two or three copies of Pulse. Yeah, yeah whereas Jund plays one. Mm -hmm. like, like, like he's a lock to play one. I could see up to three. Yep. Yeah, zero would just be wild. There's no way. I mean, it, it, he has to remove things. Yeah. Right. And blue doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. well, some good results for Raja. His teammate Zach Allen with blue-white Stoneblade takes game one over Dylan Kirkpatrick. Denying the sweep, so we have some split results on game ones. Yeah, Blue White, uh, Zach Allen, presumably we're on some number of Caracas that can really give show and tell fits. Yeah. No, it's just, it's just one anyway. All right. That's also possible. <laughs> I agreed. I was looking for it. I was like, no. I... Okay, it's in the sideboard. We have three. But he just won game one. Wait, we have three basic planes and zero Caracas? No, it's on the board. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Well, you know, sometimes you need the third basic plane. We're not playing any Vendillion clicks. If they don't bring a legendary creature out, it's just dead. Rats. We just have these stone forges and snapcasters. <sighs> Three basic planes? I mean, I don't want to. I'm like pretty out on playing the first one. That is so many basic planes. No, I mean, yeah. I mean, I think the, the explanation, Ryan, is that he, he wants to play basic planes. And I know that's strange. I, I understand where. Where that's confusing. I don't understand that statement. Yeah, he, I don't he know actively what that is choosing. He he likes drawing basic planes. It sounds like at least one of us is confused. Kite still freebooter from Collins. That's gonna miss. Yeah, Snapcast from age. Snapcast. Second tracker. Yeah. So it's like a lot of creatures. So the miss is is good for Raja, except for the fact that now Collins says, "All right, you have no removal. Image my my Mantis Rider hit you for six. Go to ten. Yeah, you can go tracker, play another land, do your thing. Please don't draw Maelstrom Pulse. Going to be hard for Collins to uh -huh. lose if Raja does not present that exact card. I guess second uh, explosive, so that cleans up the tracker. It's a little awkward. Second explosives, yeah, that's probably, I mean, he'd do it. Yeah, yeah, you can't just, like, not do that. The option land is just five. to lose. Another clue. Yeah, I mean, he's got this giant stack of clues. Yeah, the redraw to try to find Maelstrom Pulse on this turn. Sure. Swings with Tyrus Tracker. Maybe Collins blocks. There's That's no, <laughs> no way. This no. Is You'll check your human's opponent. Collins is not the yeah. player that makes this block. No. He needs a 20. He'll go to 17. Especially because the freebooter represents the seventh damage that puts Roger to three. So that sets you up so that you can draw another Mantis Rider. You see Snapcaster Mage for Collective Brutality. That does deal with the Phantasmal imaged okay. Mantis Rider. So that one's gone. So now Collins only has four power in the air. Yeah, they are. Right, because it was a copied Mantis Rider, Collector Brutality actually did work as a removal spell. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Raja can just race back here, or do we still just have to find removal? I think you need to find removal. And actually, I'm a little curious that Raja didn't escalate the Brutality to gain life. Oh, here's something. All right, and this is a two-turn clock now. Noble Hierarch, then Thalia's Lieutenant pumping everything. So we see to make that six in the air, Raja down to four. 
He needs a big draw yeah. step here, and there's just diversified converted mana cost Even now. if Raja had escalated, it, the clock would still be at two because of this draw. Yeah, the, he's very far behind now. Yeah, I do agree on the escalate play, Ryan. You see there's these two lands in Raja's hand now. Oh, yeah, you know, it probably should have happened. But yeah. I don't know that that's going to be one of those things that costs him. Draws a card off tracker okay it's fatal push sure deal with the rider but now you have an exalted already two power free booter that comes across for most of your life total well yeah so you could play a land crack a clue to get revolt because don't crack the fetch land yeah well he's already cracked a clue so you can just do that now oh right right it's just already revolt on mm. okay we're we're playing i think yeah uh, or land, crack, clue, push on Colin's turn to stop the exalted trigger though the free booter is lethal in two either way yeah, I mean, this is, we're not talking about how to win, we're talking about how to not lose immediately. Yeah. And then, you know, you're going to have to draw more fatal pushes. Swamp into play, another clue. Now that revolt has happened, it looks like Raj is going to go ahead and fatal push here, but that actually gives away an extra point of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you do it on Colin's turn, he'll attack with two creatures. The exalted won't happen on the freebooter. Yeah. You gain another life to crack that fetch land. Yeah, I mean, you get to crack the fetch. Which is actually pretty big. This I, uh, this was a misstep. I mean, yeah. Of course, anything like Thalia's Lieutenant just wins. We'll see what Collins hits. Yeah, a couple minor errors, and this game really didn't allow a margin for error. It still might, right? Like, if there's still draw steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not, he's not out of it. I mean, he's he's made it. He's taken away some percentage for sure. Thalia. That's probably fine. Yeah, there's enough mana on the battlefield now. That's not a huge issue. Pumps the lieutenant, freebooter swings, and this is the extra point we were talking about. Exalts making it three. Actually, explosives would be an excellent draw here now that there's just three two mana creatures. You always get explosives through Thalia. Yeah, it's very easy to explosives through Thalia. All lands for Raja so far. Those won't do it. So if he plays an untapped land here, he can crack one more clue. EE on two and crack it. Remember, EE doesn't actually. The Swedish National Explosives doesn't cost more under Thalia. You just declare it for a smaller number. Right. Pay the extra. Yeah, it's just Sunburst. It doesn't check the X. It's just mana paid. So but, there's some issue with that one more land. We have Fetch oh Lands no. and Blooming Marsh. So this is that situation where because he gave away the extra life point, he just lost that out. Yes. And it's a small out. Mm hmm. But it, it's. I mean, he could just draw into a removal spell, right? If he hits Maelstrom Pulse, then he doesn't lose immediately. He needs that plus something, though. Oh, my gosh, he needs another the mana. Hierarch, the Hierarch, mm. the hierarch are pu pumped by the lieutenant, so yeah, that's just a lethal creature. Draws off his clue. Here's Fatal Push. Does that do it? He needs Fatal Push plus something. All three creatures are lethal? Yeah. Collins just has to shove. Ooh, that extra drops life point, Ryan. Mm -hmm. If you did, if Raja was at two, this fatal push would have kept him alive. The two life off the brutality, the one on the sequencing with the fatal push, those these, are coming up. These matter, yeah. And so the issue now is he can remove the flyer with the fatal push, and but if Collins shoves all three creatures, we're done. Tapped, blooming marsh gives another clue to Raja. And we'll see Wait, he just says go. what Collins does. If you, oh, yeah, I you like the pass yeah, here because good. if Collins just tries to exalt, you have the push. We'll see if Collins just yeah, shoves. If all four creatures turn sideways, that should lock by it up. By leaving up mana, you're making the, the lethal play harder to see. Yeah. Now, I bet Collins still sees it. There's also some draw steps that just make this easy, like another freebooter. This Phantasmal image, on image. The free yeah, booter. so now you just look at the hand, and now, now we're not playing a guessing game. Now we're just like playing chess. You just get all the information, and you see, I gotcha. Right. You probably have to push the freebooter in response <laughs> to try to disguise your hand. But, but with Thalia in play, Ryan, if you do that, you tap two mana, mm -hmm. you make Fatal Push, you have one mana up in a Thalia. What's Khan's going to play around? That's a good point. Because <laughs> you can't play anything. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is game. This is just tapping out. So he's going to push the freebooter. OK, fine. You're forcing Collins to see that, which he he will, but you yeah, know, yeah. yeah. I, the play makes sense. Is he's going to lose the game. 
pairings. Count says, uh, probably copy Lieutenant. Yeah. Round five, our own line are at the post they will make my creatures large. Once again, I wouldn't copy Thalia. Probably wouldn't copy Noble Hierarch. Copy Tireless Tracker, it looks like. But here's the swing, and Raja can't do it. Extends the hand, and Collins Mullen on humans. Some tight play there is rewarded. He just gets across the finish line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he... Both games, really. Yeah, one of the early players of this deck, an open champion with humans. Uh, really impressive sequencing there. He's able to take it down. All right, so those players shuffling now, we will have two matches remaining. We're gonna take a short break and we'll be back with the conclusion of the round. We're back here. Collins Mullen picking up match win number one. We're gonna head over to the legacy table where we have some Stoneforge Mystics. Stoneblade versus Sneak and Show. What year is it again? I believe it's 2018, but uh, yeah, chronology is not my strong suit. Got Dylan Kirkpatrick on the left. You might remember him two weeks ago, making the finals. He's on Sneak and Show, but he's down a game. Playing a different blue-red combo deck. I can get behind doing that in every format. This one commits a, f a few fewer game actions. C picks up an Emrakul. He's got Emrakul sneak attack in hand. On the stone plate side, we have Basic Plains, Basic Island. What do we got for a counter suite in this deck? Obviously, we have Force Wills, a couple Fluster Storms. It's going to matter in a second here. So, Colin's about to make City of Traders, and he has Sneak Attack and Show and Tell in hand. So, here's Show and Tell with Volcanic Island up. This might just force action. I see what you did. Yeah. Force of Will pitching Snapcaster Mage Zach to 18. But Dylan, he's got a blue mana, he's got a red mana. Any any answers? No. Kind of expecting a red blast or a pierce or something. Yeah. You don't love pitching Snapcaster Mage to Force of Will because yeah. you're pitching a two for one to two for one yourself, but you have to not lose the game. And the, the counter spell worked out there, and he has another Force of Will hanging out as well. Yeah, and if Dylan makes a gameplay which for, gets the other Force of Will out of Zach's hand, Zach's going to be mostly out of cards. Mm -hmm. Here's land number three, draws Basic Island, and he'll play Snapcaster Mage. Looks like he's trying to hit Ponder. Last two cards are True Name Nemesis, Force of Will. Yeah, drawing a card definitely better than get getting the true name on the battlefield just because not being able to be targeted doesn't matter in the Ryan, matchup. what do you think about this? A Spell Pierce on the Ponder, you almost feel like if the Spell Pierce was there, it would have been played last turn. Oh, no, he had two mana up. That's why he doesn't play it. Yeah. Right. Force Will doesn't cost any mana. That's Correct. why. Right. I don't know. You do almost feel like it. feels it. like it's to spell. You know, <laughs> you're not used to these, these one mana counters actually having a fail case. Yeah. Taps two, floats two, City of Traitors. Makes Ancient Tomb. Emrakul, Emrakul, Cunning Wish, Sneak Attack for Dylan. One, two, three, four. Let's go for Sneak Attack. That should get the last Force of Will out of your hand. Yeah, that's a mine. That's a him to Torak. And it does. Zach, out of cards. That would have been a nice one Dylan to Spell Pierce. Yeah, Dylan read Zach for not having Force of Will blue card, and Spell Piercing that Ponder yeah. did punish him a bit there. Zach playing off the top, hits for two, says go. Let's look over at the Cunning Wish options for Dylan Kirkpatrick. Looks like he is playing that. We see Searing Wind. Firemines so Foresight. For, whoa, so another sneak attack, show and tell drawn for Dylan, but Zach had top tax Fluster Storm. Yikes. Wow. Uh, I like threw the breach a fair amount, and Dylan top tax sneak attack. He's just going to keep. You don't need Cunning Wish when you keep drawing the combo piece. I'm just going to keep shoving you. You can't. All right. Does There's... Zach play Wasteland? Can he well, waste him off the red? I mean, he has a pithing needle on his sideboard. There's okay. no wasteland. You have to make room for the third basic plane somehow. You know, there's, no, there's no wastelands in the deck. Well, it is. A, yeah, it's a sneak attack. So Caracas, because there's only single red, could actually hold off this for a bit. Yeah. You, you see Surgical Extraction and Council's Judgment all those options here. <laughs> the Surgical would have been nice after he countered the first sneak oh, attack. Oh, there's Tundra. There's Tundra. Hold on. He's, he, he has an answer. Yeah, Judgment the sneak attack. Oh, God. He is hanging on. He is hanging on. <laughs> uh, I will vote for sneak attack. And you know, this this ancient tomb damage is adding up, Ryan. Yeah, it's just uh, another a turn of Snapcaster Mage yeah, attacks every time. Yeah, he's down to time. eight. 
Well, I wanted to see through, like, Ancient Tomb Cunning Wish through the breach, except that we're getting to the point where you have to stop tapping that This land. is the last possible turn you can Cunning Wish for through the breach with using the Ancient Tomb yeah. for both spells. Yeah, yeah. So it's another update, people hanging on. Steven Dykeman takes game two over on the standard table. All right, Zach still playing off the top. He's drawn answers so far. Hits Dylan down to six. He Dylan puts, he has Flusterstorm Cunning Wish. He's gonna get this to resolve. <laughs> Did I think you could Cunning Wish for, I mean, you usually, right, you just like have to get the through the breach. I mean, you can get like yeah, a braid for the for the for the snapcaster. <laughs> Not loving that line. <laughs> you braid the snapcaster. We'll draw a combo at some point. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we dealt with the threat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing control at the low low price of four life. Yeah. Well, I guess it's only two. The braid can be cast off of Bulk Island. Yeah. Come so on, he's at four. That's, that's great. Easy. So so easy. Dylan consulting with Colin Small, and it, the problem is he doesn't have the fifth mana yet for Through the Breach. Yeah. So if he goes to that play, he also has to top deck the land. Yes. What else is he doing? Wishing, he's already wishing for a removal spell. He's already cast three sneak attacks? Or two, two shows, two sneaks? Yeah. Well, he has more wishes. Two wishes would be left, and an intuition. But wait, wait, if he's cast one wish, two... Intuition might not work. Two shows, new t uh, you, you, no, can you can find get, you, two, two of one and one of the other. As long as you you're not picky intuition. about which one you get. Yeah. So you might not be fine using the Ancient Tomb to cast them. Yeah. Surgical Extraction on Show and Tell. Okay, that's going to... There aren't in his hand. That's going to take away the ability to Intuition. There's only two sneak attacks left in the deck? Yep. Pretty sure we're just going to see Cunning Wish for Through the Breach. Zach has gone to 15. Yes, Emrakul that. that. Now one? remember, there was a time where you could wish for cards that were exiled. Yeah, like these show and tells could be gotten. Right. Now it's only cards in your sideboard. Okay. They're separate exile zones. Right. All right. Outside the game means literally one of the up to 15 cards in your sideboard. There's the exile zone, then there's the super not in this game zone. Well, yeah. Then there's like. Exiled is outside of the game. Sideboard's outside of the game. Sideboard's your trade binder's is outside of the really, game. Yeah, but Running like, to the vendor and buying a silver bullet is outside of the game. But the rules for tournament magic have a very specific there's definition. Like, there's the exile zone, then there's the really not coming back zone, then there's the this is this is really not in the game zone, and then there's the car, other cards I own zone. What's, what's the text on AWOL from Unhinged? It's the absolutely removed from the freaking game. Yeah, from the game, this, this stuff's not coming back zone. Yeah. Gets through the breach. Okay, that's the line we saw here. He's at four. He's going to go to two to cast through the breach. He's got a turn to draw land. Lotus Petal <laughs> does like it. Ancient Doom. <laughs> and he hits. He hits. It's Scalding Tarn. <laughs> With one life. Fetches down to three. Ancient Tomb is down to one. And this Emrakul is exactly lethal. Through the breach, Emrakul swing. Game three, Dylan Kirkpatrick and Zach Allen. What a hit there. Yeah. So they are going to three. Yeah, went through a lot of the sneak attacks and show and tells, but uh, Cunning Wish came through, had exactly enough time with the Ancient Tomb. All right, so that's going to count on. We have a pair of Game 3s. Alan and Dykeman need both of them. We'll be back in just one minute with the conclusion of the round.
All right, so game number three, Sneak and Show versus Stoneblade. On the way, you see right now Raj Suleiman consulting with teammate Steven Dykeman. They need both wins here. Yes. Yeah, Collins Mullen very quickly winning the modern match. And we went over Raja. Uh, so players kind of looking in the standard match. That one is also in game three. Could be seeing a conclusion there. If Austin Collins wins that, that will be the match. Collins Mullen has won the match. Players presented. We're seeing some quick shuffling and we'll be drawing up opening seven shortly. Zach Allen on the play after losing game two. Certainly where you want to be. It looks like he had it, Ryan. <laughs> it certainly did. Yeah, there was a lot of top decks going back and forth. Yeah, both players just yeah, both players are drawing really well. The show and tells, the sneak attacks, the answers for both. On we look at this. Three lands, Jace, Ponder, Ponder, and then it's he's Got one of the uh, invocations. Uh, lands, ponders, yeah, it's a key. Top three on the ponder. Island, no, <laughs> three basic islands. No. No, thank you. Nope. Yeah, had plenty of land in hand already, and this hand, it looks like it's missing disruption. You want to keep this because you're heavy on ponder and you get to look, but this hand needs to find something. Kirkpatrick's deck generally presents a very fast combo. Usually it asks a question of you on turn two. Mm -hmm. You should have something when they do. Yeah, in, in your situation where if you're not playing into literal blue-blue counterspell mana, all of the counterspell exchanges are generally just good for Kirkpatrick. If you're pitching a card for Force of Will, if you have something like Flusterstorm and he's not breaking through anyway. Can I, can I bring Jace to show and tell? And we have Preordain coming down here for Kirkpatrick. Yeah. Keep in mind, Jace, though Caracas is an answer to show and tell, if the your opponent's bringing Emrakul, Jace does not work. Show and tell was printed before Planeswalkers were a thing. So Long it, before Planeswalkers yeah. were a thing. They have like, oh, I'll put in Emrakul, I'll put in Jace. That would be nice, but is not how it works. Also, Dylan has picked up Omniscience in his hand. So yeah, he scribed two to the top there with the preordain. You really hate to see that when you play against a combo. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, oh, two, top, top. Oh boy, I, guess I better have something really soon. I hope that it was just two cantrips and you decided that that was fine. And we see the Caracas for Zach Allen. Is that? Yeah, okay, I, yeah I'm not sure. I'm not don't, unclear. I think that's a fetch land. Okay, so we'll go with Brainstorm from Dylan. Uh, either way, Caracas isn't going to solve a problem here because of the omniscience. Correct. That's your defense against Caracas. Yeah. You have to just cast the Emrakul. Yeah, against the deck that's going to Caracas, you omniscience, cast Emrakul, get the extra turn trigger, shove with Annihilator. Ryan, how do you feel about people saying omniscience instead of omniscience? You can do whatever you want, man. Full brainstorm, cracks the fetch afterward. I think the question is how funny or clever do they think they are? If you're doing it terribly to, clever. If you're doing it to mock people that say that and think that no, they're funny. I'm really proud. That's the level I want to be. If you're proud about that, I think you should dream bigger. <laughs> I think you should be doing more with your life if what you're if, proud about that joke. All right. I ruined it by saying it on air. Now you can't. So now it's like not original. <laughs> Here's Ponder. That one's been around for a while. Oh, I know. It's I didn't come up with it. <laughs> This Ponder is looking at three spells. Looks like a force of will in there. Protecting your combo yeah. is usually pretty important. Yeah, and it's one of those games where they go preordain, top, top, draw, ponder, keep three, draw. Yeah. Everything, you know, after a, after a full brainstorm, you're like, oh, I bet your hand's probably good by now. Mm. And by, it's, it's probably great. I'm about to get comboed, if and your I, hand, bet, I bet you're going to defend it. If your hand is bad, you screwed up. Yeah. 
We see basic planes showing up for Zach Allen here. Interesting prioritizing basic lands in this yeah, matchup. Well, You're not going to get wastelanded by the sneak and show do, player. Do they blood moon you or do they back to basics you? That's, is that, sometimes, that's sometimes, sometimes they blood moon you, but he's he's got 100 planes. He's got counterspell on his well, deck. He has another fetch uh -huh. land in hand. And he chose to play planes. He wants to draw it. So that that's means you true. want to fetch it. You want to draw it. You just you want planes. Yeah, you go for the third one so you can find it. A containment priest showing up here. Oh, hey, I do like that one a lot. Yes. <laughs> that's good here. Yeah, Dylan's going to read it as well. Okay. So this doesn't turn off show and tell for omniscience. omniscience right. That's the key. Sorry, I, omni science. <laughs> all the science will be still <laughs> will still commence. Your containment priest does nothing to all the science that ever was. Right. But if it really limits what Dylan can do in that regard, he's got to get the omniscience into play now. Mm -hmm. If a non-token creature enter the battlefield without casting it, and Dylan doesn't cast his creatures, then it's exiled instead. Also, this is a two-two. Yeah, there's a few answers in the wish board that deal with Containment Priest, and this is certainly one of the cards you have in mind looking at that. You have some Colex returns, or just one, uh, rather, and then a Braid. Hey, hey, Ron, I think we do have with those basics, there are Blood Moons in Dylan's board, and Zach surgically extracted him last game. So if he saw the Blood Moon while doing it, that would explain why he's playing this way. Sure. Honestly, I think it's incorrect for Dylan to have them in. But, but if they're there, I suppose if you, saw if you them, know about them, you should pay them respect. Yeah, it's, it doesn't cost too much, right? Oh, right. Tundra is just so much better than planes. I don't know. Well, yeah, it makes blue mana. <laughs> <laughs> that should be clear. I mean, like, obviously Tundra is worse than Island, but it's better than planes. Well, there's a Tundra. There All you right, go. So let's go. Yeah, kind of the issue that, I, that I'm having here is that this mana can't cast Counterspell proper, so there's just less that Dylan has to worry about here. All right, here we go. Lotus Petal from Dylan. Cracks Lotus Petal. Show and tell. You don't want to get flusterstormed here. And we're going to play, see if they want to play through this turn. It may not matter. I believe Austin Collins just won in standard. We're going to play out the turn, though. Here is Force of Will on show and tell. Yeah. Basically, we know that Dylan's going to force back. The question right. is, does Zach have either another force or a Flusterstorm? A Flusterstorm would be great here, but the Force Wheel is not enough. Force is back. Nothing but lands on Zach's side. It says, go for it. Sure, I will. What are you You're not going to like this. Yeah, I'm not bringing a creature. I see your containment priest. You want to put it in a land? You can put you can. it in a land. You can, hollow, you can have a Follow Fountain. Probably not Hollowed Fountain. Not Hollowed Fountain. Uh, the, <laughs> but but there we go. How about Omniscience, though? I will cast and then Emrakul. I'm going to cast this. I'm going to take another turn. Is that cool? And okay, my uh, turn. That's a 3-0 sweep. Now I'm going to take all your permanents. Our team's already won, but I'm going to win this one, too. Dylan Kirkpatrick's got it in Legacy as well, defeating Zach Allen. 3-0. They get all the matches, and they are the, your winners. Yeah. Really impressive stuff.